Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here at Buckeye Christian Church. We are so glad that you could join us in person and on the live stream here. Um, if you did not see, we do have donuts and coffee that was out there in the foyer. Uh, make sure that you grab some, because if you don't, then I'm sure I will take them home and it won't go well. So it's a bad idea. But I do want to say happy Easter to all, and uh, more importantly, happy Resurrection Day. It's an amazing time to celebrate, to talk about exactly what Jesus did for us. Uh, my name is John Thomason, and I'm the lead minister here at Buckeye. If you have not heard, we have officially launched our new app. Um, we have it available on Android and Apple. We have pamphlets out there. If you need to, to see what exactly you need to do to download this, it's a great way to stay connected. You can see our live streams when you're not able to be here. You can see all the events that are coming up, and there are a lot of things that are happening here at Buckeye, and it's the best way just to say, yep, I want to be a part of this. Uh, the other thing is I want to give a quick reminder that this Tuesday is the start of the ASL class. Um, if you've ever wanted to learn American Sign Language, this is the perfect opportunity. Um, this is for everybody. It's free. Um, this will be taught by our deaf minister, Bobby Ringel, every Tuesday night from 6.30 to 8, and it's starting this Tuesday for 10 weeks right here in this building. Um, if you're not available to make it in person, we will have it live streamed as well, um, but I know that interaction is definitely something that's awesome to have during the ASL classes. Um, I know when I'm screwing up or if I'm doing something completely wrong, Bobby can call me out and say, no, no, don't do that, that's offensive. Um, so, but that is something that is happening um, Tuesday night starting there, so we'd love to have you out for that. Well, over the last couple weeks, we've been talking all about heroes of faith, about men and women in the Bible that just live it out. They know what they believe, and they're doing exactly what God has called them to do. And as we went through these stories some really amazing things did happen, and we got to see some miracles and things that just changed the world forever. But this week, we're going to talk about the hero of our faith, of what we believe. If you do not know, Easter is a time where we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. You may love the peanut butter eggs, and, and my father-in-law loves jelly beans like that's his thing, but that's not the reason we celebrate that's not the reason that we gather together and talk about Easter. The reason we celebrate is because God's Son chose to die for us. His name was Jesus, and Jesus was blameless. He walked, talked, and lived on this earth without sin. That alone blows my mind. I'm lucky if I can go a week sometimes. <laughs> and when the time came, he said, you know what? I'm going to die, and I'm going to sacrifice myself for every single person, every single one. Those who were born before Jesus to those that will live on this earth after him, he chose to say that my blood is going to cover your sins. Because the truth is, we're terrible people and we do terrible things. It's a horrible truth and it's hard to admit, but we have failed God. We have sinned. And because of this sin, we have separated ourselves from God. And the thing is, we cannot pray enough, we cannot do enough good deeds to restore our relationship with God. We need help. And the only way to restore our relationship with God is to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and to try and follow His ways, to be baptized into the belief of Jesus. And it's because Jesus paid the price for you. Jesus said, personally, I will die for you. And it's also that you can be with God again. That you can have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God again. But Jesus' death is actually celebrated in what we call Good Friday. And yes, it's celebrated. Last time I talked to somebody that was not a Christian about this, I said, Good Friday is when we talk about the death of Jesus. And they're like, that's terrible that you call his death good. It is celebrated. It was good. Jesus wasn't captured and killed. It's not that he didn't know what was going on. He's God. He chose to die. He was beaten, humiliated, and then hung on a cross till he breathed his last breath. And that was all by choice. And that was all because he loved us. But what happened next showed us that Jesus has power over everything. Jesus did die and covered our sins, but then he came back just as he said he would. 
Today we're going to be reading out of uh, Luke 24, and we're going to see exactly what happened when Jesus came back. So it'll be Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. And from the front, I read out of the NIV Bible. If you do not have a Bible, we have a stack of them right back there. Please take one. It's yours. Read it. Use it. Love it. We will always give away the Word of God for free here at Buckeye. So let's go ahead and read Luke 24, 1 through 12. It says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners to be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to, to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. So here we start off with some of the women who knew Jesus personally. These are some of the women that were there when he breathed his last breath. They saw him die, and some of them even prepared his body to put in the tomb. They had witnessed it all. They had seen their Lord die. On this morning... They were headed to where Jesus' body was, and they were taking spices to put on Jesus' body. When they got there, though, the stone that was rolled in front of the tomb was now moved. And they decided, well, let's go look in. What's happening here? And they noticed that Jesus' body was gone. The thing is, at this point, they were not exactly sure what had happened. It didn't say they said, oh, praise God, he, he has raised again from the dead. No, none of that happened. It says that two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. That's a scary thought alone. So you're, you're with your, your people that you hang out with, and you're going to go to Jesus' grave to put spices on his body, and, and you notice that it's open, you walk inside, and all of a sudden these men just pop out of nowhere, and they're just shining like lightning, literally. For obvious reasons, the women were afraid. They didn't know what was going on. But these men tell the women... Why are you here looking for someone who is living in a place for the dead? He's not here. And it says with an exclamation point, he has risen. And they kind of give him a little reminder. Remember how Jesus, you know, told you this while he was still with you? The thing is, Jesus spelled it out for his followers. He said, I'm going to be handed over to sinners. I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to die. But on that third day, I'm going to rise again. It's so interesting because these women did not come to see if what Jesus had said was true. They had spices for his dead body. It wasn't some sort of celebration they were going to. Nobody actually thought what Jesus said when he was going to die was going to come true. They thought he was dead. That was it. It was over. But this was just the beginning where Jesus is trying to prove that I am God. Death cannot hold me down. I'm still alive. That he's all powerful and that he can even conquer death. So the women come back from their trip to Jesus after Jesus' tomb. And they tell the disciples that are there and the apostles about what had happened and what they saw. And about these men that came and told them that he is alive. And these are the men and the disciples and apostles that followed Jesus too. They knew him. They walked with him. They talked with him. They had interactions with him. They heard the exact same words that Jesus had said where he would rise again in three days. 
But the disciples did not believe these women. For the most part, they didn't even give it a second thought. I can just see them sitting there and the women telling this amazing story of what has happened. And then you got the guys going, sure, mm hmm, yeah, okay. It was empty. And then, yeah, some dude just showed up and he looked like lightning. Yeah, okay, did you take your medicine today? Because not, that's not right. Whatever you say, ladies, they didn't even pay attention. Except for one. One of the disciples named Peter. He had to see. And Peter ran to Jesus' tomb himself. He needed to know if what they said was true. It says that he saw the strips of cloth that were left, and nothing else was there. But he still did not believe that Jesus had rose from the dead. It says that he was left wondering. So I imagine him looking at the cloth. Hmm, what happened? I, pff, I don't know. Here's the clothes. You know, like... I. I talked to my kid about this, and I didn't say it in first service, but we'll say it in this one. My son was like, so was he naked? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus was not running around naked, <laughs> but the cloth was left there, and Peter had no clue what was actually going on. It's that thought process of, could this be true? Could Jesus really be back? Nah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And I feel like we definitely feel like Peter when we first are trying to understand Christ. This can't be true, can it? This doesn't make a lot of sense. I need more proof. Let's go ahead and keep reading verses 13 through 34. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things? And then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon." This is such an interesting prospect. We have all wanted to know what people really think. To be that fly on the wall. To hear the conversations that people will have about you when you're not there. To really understand what they're really feeling. Well, Jesus was back. And the men were actually kept from recognizing him. So Jesus was able to be there and hear 
what they thought about what was going on and the things they said about Jesus. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed. The thing is, though, we had hoped that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel, to save us, to bring us back to power, into our glory. But then he was killed. And some of the women went to the tomb, and Jesus' body was gone. They said they saw angels who said he was alive. And the thing is, obviously, the disciples were not saying this in a tone of amazement that this is truth. They weren't saying it like, angels were there, and, and Jesus is alive, praise God. And the reason we know they weren't saying it in that tone is because of the way that Jesus responds back to them. How foolish you are. How slow to believe everything that was foretold that the Messiah would have to suffer and then enter into his glory. Imagine Jesus saying that directly to you. <laughs> they then invited this person who they thought was a stranger into their home because it was getting late. And this is where Jesus reveals who he is. But he does it only for a second. He breaks the bread and then they realize that's him. He's there. But then he was gone. At this point, multiple followers have actually physically seen Jesus, seen that he is alive. You would think this would be enough proof that Jesus had actually conquered death. He foretold that it would happen. He was gone out of the tomb. A bunch of them have actually seen him, and there were some angels that came down. That this would be enough to say, yes, he did it. What Jesus said has come true. Sadly, that's not the case. It's not the case at all. We're going to keep reading verses 36 through 49. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. They still doubted. They see Jesus right in front of them. It's almost like he would be sitting right there in the front row. It's as you see me now. And what do they think? He's a ghost. There's a ghost here. There's no way that he's actually back and alive. Thank God it was Jesus and not me at this point. I think I would have thrown my hands up and walked away. Jesus says, guys, come on. I'm not a ghost. It's me. Look where the nails went into my hands and feet. You can touch me. You can see me. It says that they still didn't fully understand, and they just couldn't believe it. But this time it says they did not believe it because of amazement. It's almost like that moment where something truly amazing happens, and you just keep saying, no way. There's no, the, no way. This is impossible. This is crazy. I can't even wrap my mind around this. There's no way this is happening. But it was true. Jesus was back. And he solidified it 
by showing them that he was really there, that he's alive, by asking for food. I found this kind of humorous. He's like, do you have any food? Anything? Oh, here's a fish. Look, I'm, I, see, I'm eating. Yeah, people eat food. I'm a person too. Go stone eat. I'm actually here. Like it's that, that last thing to let you know I'm real. It's so amazing that he didn't give up on the disciples. He told them and all these signs and he never threw up his hands saying, why am I doing this? Jesus though says to them next, now is when everything changes. My death and resurrection has happened. I am here just like it was told that it was going to happen. The exact same way that it was written hundreds of years ago. It's come true. Now it is time to repent for the forgiveness of your sins. It is time to repent, to turn away from the things that you were doing wrong against God, to walk away from it. But guess what? Guess what, Israelites? Guess what, Jews? Guess what? chosen people. It's not just for you. I did not die and rise again just for you. It's for all nations. I died for everyone. I rose from the dead for everyone. This time of year, some, Easter is something different for those that believe in Christ. Easter is about a couple of things. When you actually go and ask people that do not believe in Christ, you ask them, what does it mean to celebrate Easter? Why do we celebrate Easter? And I did that. I asked a couple people that I know that do not believe in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And I said, so what is Easter to you? And of course, some of them, it's the bunny, it's the candy, it's all that stuff that comes out, the holiday stuff, all that that's going on. And that's fine. But then you get a little bit deeper and you ask, so what else is happening there? And you get answers like, well... Easter is about renewal. Easter is about spring, bringing new life. Easter is about change, because we're into a new season. I know personally that the change of season feels so good, not going to lie. I felt like nature was kind of punching me in the gut on April 1st, giving me 34 degrees. You know, here's a little sun. Just kidding. But when you do get that fresh air and the cold is gone... It can be invigorating. It can even it fill you with such joy in life. There are some people that I know when they get out in that sun, they are ready. They're like, I feel so much better. And what amazes me is this is the exact same thing for followers of Christ for Easter. And this is my, this is my doorway to talking about what I believe in Easter. I said, that's amazing. That's exactly what I believe. And they were like, I thought you believed in Jesus. I do. It's about a bringing of new life. It's about Jesus raising from the dead. It's all about the sacrifice that he made. Why? So I can be made into something new. With Jesus' death, he washed away my sins. That dark season of my life is gone. I was made into something new. With Jesus coming back, he brought us out of the cold and darkness and said, look, I am God and I can do anything. It is the best thing that has ever happened to this world and it is the best thing that has ever happened for me. Jesus came back from the dead and because of it, Jesus is victorious. He is one. He's Lord over all because the thing is we see death as final. When someone dies, that's the end of the road. Jesus said, that can't even hold me down. I don't follow those rules. Jesus, like the disciples, said to them, you're a doubter, and we want to doubt just like them. The thing is, when we talk to others that don't know Jesus, we need to be the same way that he was and not give up. We need to keep showing them. We need to keep trying to explain and have patience while doing it. I already told you that if I was there, I'd have been like, I'm done, I'm out, they're not listening. Jesus says, no, tell them. 
He had to appear to them, talk with them, give scripture to them. He even had to prove it to them twice and eat a fish. All because of how important it is for people to know and understand what this means. I'm going to tell you right now, flat out, He is real. He is all-powerful. He is alive. And He is one. And I can tell you that Jesus has not always been my champion. That I didn't claim Him. I tried to make so many other things the most important thing in my life. Money. Family. Fun. They all have failed me. I have been hurt. I have been let down. And ultimately, I was completely lost. But something changed everything. When I found out the truth about Jesus Christ, when I finally knew that there was a God who loves me so much that He would die for me, it changed my life completely. And I think my favorite part is, <laughs> I said this to my wife earlier, who doesn't like being part of a winning team? <laughs> I like to win! And the truth is now, I've won as well. <laughs> and what's the most amazing part? I can't lose! There's no way that I can actually lose now. There is nothing that can change the fact that I have a relationship with the creator of the universe. And guess what? He's on my side. Yeah, good luck trying to beat me down. The reason I love Easter so much is for two reasons. One, it's a great opportunity to share what I believe to those who don't know. To tell them about how I'm on the winning team. And guess what? You can be too. And second, it's an amazing reminder that God loves me more than anything. That he went through all of this for me. So my challenge for you this week depends on where you are in your relationship with God. If you do not have a relationship with God, my challenge for you is to seek it. To truly look. Ask someone about why they believe in Jesus Christ. And then I want you to pick up a Bible and start reading the New Testament and start asking people that say they believe to explain it to you, to talk about it. I want you to put so much effort into finding out what it truly means. For those who already have a relationship with Christ, my challenge to you is to ask, where can I spread this news of Christ? The news of His death, the news of the resurrection, the fact that it's for everyone, no matter what you've done or where you've been in life. The thing is, we are called to be the ones to spread this news. Over the next few weeks, we'll be looking at how Jesus' victory means it's time for us to go and tell the world that Jesus has won. Too often when we say, yeah, we've won, we love to sit back and say, look, we did it. <laughs> Jesus sits back now and says, I did it. Now go. God wants us to be his hands and his feet to grow his kingdom. Easter is an amazing opportunity to go out there and tell people why we need to be celebrating. Let's go ahead and pray. God, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for loving us so much, for sending your son down to choosing to die for us, not because we deserve it, all because of who you are just because you love us that much. And then you said, death cannot hold me down. And you came back and you showed us that you are God. I pray that we can go out there and spread the news to everyone and let them know that God loves them so much that he would die for them and even beat death for them. We thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. We'll now have a time of invitation that if, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today's the day. Or maybe you're even asking, I don't even know what that means, but you want to know more? We'll have somebody to talk to you in the back today about what it means to be a follower of Christ. Maybe you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you've never been baptized. God calls us all to be baptized just as Jesus was to be a true follower. I ask you today, come forward. We got the water right there. It's ready to go. Or maybe you just need some prayer. 
Prayer is powerful. Prayer is amazing. If you don't want to come back today, please just fill out one of the cards. Go online. Send us a message. There's so many ways that we can pray for you. Just let us know what we can do to lift up your name to God. If you have any decision that you'd like to make today during this next song, please just stand and head to the back. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope.